वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टू माय क्लास इन टूडेज क्लास विल मूव टू चैप्टर फोर विच इज एक्सटेंशन ऑफ चैप्टर थ्री द टॉपिक इज रिकॉर्डिंग ऑफ ट्रांजैक्शन टू नाउ इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न द सब डिविजन ऑफ जर्नल्स नाउ टू मेक अकाउंटिंग मोर क्विक एंड एफिशियंट वी आर गोइंग टू सब डिवाइड द जर्नल और दो सब डिविजन ऑफ जर्नल्स आर कॉल्ड एज स्पेशल जर्नल्स सो दिस विल गिव अस इजी रेफरेंस फॉर लुकिंग एट एनी ट्रांजेक्शन्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी कैन नो वॉट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ क्रेडिट परचेजेस और क्रेडिट सेल्स और कैश ट्रांजेक्शन्स सो सिमिलर टाइप ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन्स are recorded in one particular book and that book is called as sub division of journal or special journals or subsidiary books so we are having different subsidiary books one is purchase book now in this purchase book we record only credit purchases of goods which we have purchased on credit next you are having the sales book now in sales book only credit sales of goods are recorded then we are having purchase returns book now sometimes goods are returned to our suppliers or customers may return goods to us this returns may be because of the damaged conditions or change in rate change in quality or wrong supply of goods for any other reason the goods can be returned back to the suppliers or customers such returns are also to be recorded in the books of accounts so if we are returning back to our suppliers it is treated as purchase returns book similarly if our customers are returning back goods to us so the sales made by us are returned back to the by our customers and whatever returns are made by our customers are treated in sales return followed so we are having purchase returns and sales returns next one is cash book now this cash book only records those transactions where we are paying cash or receiving cash immediately on purchase or sale or any amount which is spent in cash to meet the day to day expenses or incomes received on that day will be recorded in cash book so cash book records only pure cash transactions now coming to bills receivable books now in bills receivable the bills which are due on a particular date will be paid by our debtors so whenever we receive amount from our debtors it is treated as bills receivable book so the records of bills received on a particular date by the debtors will be recorded in this book similarly when credit purchases are made we have to pay the suppliers on a future date so for this purpose our suppliers will give us bills payable or bills so those bills the date on which they are met will be recorded in bills payable book now the last type of subsidiary book is journal proper now this journal proper records those transactions which are not recorded in the above seven books now for example if i take opening entries relating to the assets and liabilities now when business is having assets for example fixed assets and all followed these assets will be carried forward for a long period of time as long as it is sold or business is closed so such opening balance when we are transferring the opening balance from the previous year to the next year on the assets and liabilities we are going to record it in journal proper in this book now coming to uh, one more example we are having credit purchase of assets 
now whenever we are purchasing credit or selling the assets on credit basis we will not be recording it in purchase or sales book such transactions will be recorded in journal proper because sales and purchase book give credit purchase or sale of goods in which we are dealing but assets credit purchases or sales will be recorded in journal proper so these are the different types of the journal which are subdivided so we'll see each and every book how it is prepared in this particular topic next we are having journal proper now journal proper is a book that records those transactions which cannot be recorded in any other subsidiary books so now what is journal proper is a two mark question so you have to just write book which records transactions which cannot be recorded in other subsidiary books so for example entries relating to purchase or sale of asset on credit next you are having adjusting entries now what is adjusting entries now sometimes we are having outstanding expenses or prepaid expenses or outstanding incomes or paid in advance now whenever such incomes or expenses are adjusted either on outstanding or for prepaid then they are called as adjusting entries excuse me <coughs> so we have to record those in journal proper next opening entries opening entries means for transferring or closing these assets at the end of the year and transferring for the next accounting year so such opening entries will be taken into account only in journal proper so we are having journal proper which may come for only two mark and this journal is prepared as we prepare journal and record the entries in it now coming to the next book that is called as a subsidiary book which is called as purchase book now purchase book is a book which records credit purchase of goods hmm? now cash purchases or credit purchase of assets are not dealt or recorded in this book so now in purchase book we are recording only in the goods which we are dealing and such purchases should be made on credit basis then only it will be recorded in purchase book so only credit purchase of goods will be recorded at a particular place and that book is called as purchase book so for example the transaction may come as goods purchased from geeta so now we do not have any cash transaction here so when cash transaction is not mentioned it is assumed to be a credit purchase so we record such type of transaction in purchase book now here you have the format of purchase book so the whole purchase book has five columns so first column is the date column second is inward invoice number so whenever purchases are made the invoice now what is invoice invoice is a statement which is given by the supplier or the owner of the goods on purchase or sale of goods so here the supplier is preparing this invoice so this invoice is a statement which gives us the details or the contents of the goods which are being supplied relating to cost quantity kgs number of packets all these are recorded in the invoice so the on purchases the invoice is coming in our business that's why we call it as inward invoice number so second column records the inward invoice number or invoice number so every invoice or the bill that is being sent will have one number and that number is called as inward invoice number 
next you are having the particular columns where we are going to record the name of the supplier so in our journal the amount the account which is credited that means the supplier is always credited whenever we are having credit purchases so the account to be credited that supplier's name is to be recorded in the third column now fourth column is ledger folio the page number of the ledger so each and every creditor or supplier will be having one ledger because we have to keep an account of what amount is purchased and what amount is paid to him during the month for that purpose we have a ledger in his account and on which ledger his uh, this page his account is existing that number has to be written so lf is page number and lastly the amount of credit sales from whom it is made is to be recorded so these are the things which have to be recorded so the below line says first records first column to record dates of purchases second column records the invoice price number or invoice number hmm? invoice price should not be there invoice number it should record the invoice number next third column gives the names of the suppliers now from some suppliers we may purchase two or more things now for example if i take stationery is from the same supplier i purchase paper i purchase pen i purchase books files everything from the same bookseller therefore what all types of goods are purchased if it is given all those have to be recorded in the third column next you are having the ledger folio that is the page number of the ledger the account on which page the supplier's name is appearing that is called as ledger folio and the fifth column records the amount that has to be credited in the name of the supplier if he gives discount it is treated as trade discount and such trade discount has to be deducted from the uh, this invoice after deducting it has to be recorded in the main so remember students trade discount is never recorded in the books of accounts so we'll see one problem in the uh, this next slide so we are having a problem on purchases so what it says enter the following in purchase book of messrs gupta traders so you are having the transaction on 2017 jan 1st purchase from messrs suresh 10000 credit purchase on second credit purchases from mr santosh less 10% trade discount rupees 20000 so such trade discount has to be reduced from 20000 whatever is the balance will be recorded next purchased from mahesh 8000 on 9th january 11th january purchased office furniture from bengaluru furniture marked 15000 bought goods from girish less 5% trade discount so now this is a problem which is given to you so these transactions all are relating to the purchase of goods and asset so first we have to remember when we are preparing purchase book that credit purchase of assets will not be recorded next cash purchase also is not going to be recorded so what we have to remember first purchase book records only credit transaction of goods purchased second credit purchase of asset is to be recorded in journal proper therefore transaction dated 11th january will not be considered now the third point we are having trade discount at two particular transactions such trade discount has to be deducted and only the net purchases have to be recorded in our books of accounts so here we have the solution for our reference we have taken the problem at the side and the solution is given here so now we are having 1st january 
goods purchased from Mr. Suresh. Now I should take only the name of the supplier. So I'll write the date 1-1-2017. First invoice relates. Now this number is not given. Invoice number is not given in the problem. So just we are going to write 1-2-3-4 as and how they are being recorded. So on 1st January we are having Mr. Santosh which is the supplier or who is the supplier so he has supplied good so in particular column I'll write Messrs Suresh 10,000 goods purchased are 10,000 so 10,000 is written here next I have credit purchase from Mr. Santosh less 10% trade discount rupees 20,000 now what is this 10% of 20,000 here down we are having the note 10% of 20,000 is nothing but 2,000. So from 20,000 I should minus 2,000 and then record it. So on 2nd I will write the date 2-1-2017. My second invoice is pertaining to Mr. Santosh. Total goods sold by him is 20,000 on which he is giving 10% discount. So that 10% discount has to be deducted. So 20 minus 10 gives me 18,000. Next on 9th, purchased from Mahesh rupees 8,000. So now purchased from Mahesh means the goods only are purchased from Mahesh. So on 9, 1, 2017, 3rd Mahesh traders only. I will write the name of the supplier Mahesh traders 8,000. Now coming to the 11th, 11th is office furniture purchased. So it is purchased on credit and such transaction will go to journal proper. It will not come in my purchase book. So I will go directly to 26th. On 26th bought goods from Girish less 5% trade discount. So again you are having trade discount. So this trade discount has to be recorded. The total amount is missing. That amount is 28,000. So bought goods from Girish less trade discount. 5% rupees 28,000. So here in the working note it is given 28,000. So now what is 5% of 28,000? It is 1,000. 400. So that 1400 which is seen in the working note has to be deducted from 28,000. So the difference will come it is 26,200. So your total will be 62,600. We will just write here rupees 28,000 for the purchases. So now I hope it is clear. So just adjust 28,000 is appearing in our problem. So you are having 28,000 on purchase of goods. Now I hope it is clear with sales book. In the next class we will see how to prepare purchase as well as sales book. So before going to solving such problems we will see what is sales book now in sales book we are going to record only those transactions which are pertaining to credit sale of goods and such credit sale of goods in which we are dealing should be made to the customers so we record only credit sale of goods made to the customers now cash sales and credit sale of assets are not recorded in purchase book so only the credit sale will be taken now for example if I take goods sold for rupees 6000 I do not know who is the uh, seller or who is the customer so I do not know when I have the customer I will take it as a cash transaction so such type of transactions are not recorded in the books of account 
so this is not recorded in the books of account it has to be cancelled so if i tell sold goods for rupees 6000 to sony or something then it will be recorded so this transaction is not going to be recorded in the books of accounts now we'll see what is the format now we are having the format of sales book which is similar to that of a purchase book you are having five columns one is date column one is invoice column now this invoice is called as outward invoice now why it is called as outward invoice because we are preparing the invoice and sending it to the customers along with the supply of goods so this invoice also contains the date the quality the rate the quantity then the details to whom it has to be sent the place of destination name of the customer everything is recorded in this invoice along with the number it has one specific number next one you are having the particulars so in this particulars column i am going to write the name of the customer to whom the goods are sold on credit so the name of customer always appears on the debit side of journal entry next you are having the ledger folio which records the page number of the customers ledger next you are having the amount which is recorded after deducting trade discount if it is given so we are having the details first column records the date of credit sale second column records the invoice number third column records the name of the customer to whom goods are supplied fourth column is for ledger folio and fifth column is for recording the amount of credit sales after discount if given now we are having a problem stating from the following transaction prepare sales book now november goods sold to ravi rupees 6000 3rd november mr keshav bought goods from us rupees 7000 next 9th credit sales to mr arun 10000 at 2% discount next goods sold to amul for cash rupees 8000 last one on 24th credit sales to mr dhananjay for rupees 4500 and he spent rupees 200 for transportation so now remember when sales book is to be prepared we are going to record only the credit sales made to the customer so again sale of uh, this asset on credit or sale of goods for cash is not recorded here now if we see the transaction dated 12th it is a cash transaction because goods sold to amul for cash this cash is appearing so it's a cash transaction so it cannot be recorded in our sales book similarly if i come to the 24th 24th transaction says mr dhananjay has paid additional 200 rupees for transporting the goods so whenever goods are being sold it the transportation charges or any additional costs will be usually borne by the customer so such amount will become the cost of the goods that are to be traveled so it all depends on the agreement sometimes the cost may include or exclude so if it is to be paid at the time of point of sale then we treat it as a part of cost or it is a cost of goods sold so these are to be recorded or remembered so you are having the sales book 16th you are having sold goods to Ravi on 1st November 3rd November Keshav bought goods from us 7000 on account now what is this on account already we have made previous transactions in the last month or previous months with Keshav that's why he is already existing in our book so when the person is existing in our book the transaction may contain on account so don't get confused what is on account next you are having credit sales 
credit sales to Arun 10,000 less trade discount 2%. Next, sold to Amul for cash 8,000 credit sales to Mr. Dhanraj 4,000 spent rupees 200 for transportation. So now again I will prepare my ledger sales book with 5 column date uh, particulars amount and all so on 1st November I have purchased or sold goods to Ravi so I'll write only Ravi's name and the amount of goods sold to him 6000 on 3rd you are having Keshav so Keshav has bought goods worth rupees 7000 so Keshav has bought goods from us means we are selling goods to Keshav so Keshav's account it is 7000 Next, on 9th, credit sales are made to Arun and we are giving him discount of 2%. So now I have to calculate what is 2% of 10,000. So I will cancel 2 zeros. So when I cancel 2 zeros of on 10,000, I will get the answer 200. Such 200 has to be deducted from 10,000. So my net sales will be 9,800. So, I will record in the book 9, 11, 16, the third invoice pertaining to Arun after giving him discount 9800 only is recorded. Next one on 12th. Now on 12th, Amul has paid immediately 8000. So, I have received cash. Relation between me and Amul will not exist once if cash is paid. So being a cash transaction, it cannot be recorded in sales book. Next on 24th. On 24th, I am having sold goods to Dhanraj and he has spent rupees 200 towards transportation. So that 200 becomes the part of the cost. So I will write on 24-11-2016 Dhanraj. 4500 plus additional cost of 200 has been incurred and that will give me 4700 so i have completed with all the transactions now we have to total the credit sales made during the month and at the end i should write the total so it is 27500 so this will end my sales book so in the next class, we'll see for some more problems on sales book and purchase book where madam is going to give you all live examples. So till then, be safe and thank you.